648, it's Hot Talk 99.5, the Hot Talk Morning Show, along with uh, Dave and Liz, Dave Priest, Liz Calloway. Uh, obviously, one of the big stories that a lot of people have been talking about is Cecil the Lion. Anytime you have a lion that has a name, number one, and number two, it's named Cecil, you know it's not going to be a big, <laughs> ferocious lion that's right? going to be, have to worry about villagers uh, and, and, you know, killing randomly and stuff like that. It's one of the most beloved lions in Africa. You know the story. The guy uh, lured it out along with the help of a couple of people. And uh, now Cecil the lion is dead, and a lot of people are up in arms about it. Walter Palmer is the guy who uh, shot and killed the lion. Um, we figured we'd go ahead and uh, call um, uh, Robert Johnson. Rob Johnson is uh, not with the lion's preserve, but with the tiger's preserve. But we feel that Big Cats is his, uh, his uh, purview. So we appreciate uh, Robbie coming in today. Good morning, guys. Uh, morning. Great to be here again. This is uh, quite the story that's come out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, dear. it is. Um, I, and also, I was just happened to look up, and I, I just found out that yesterday was International Tiger Day. It was, in fact, International I, Tiger Day. I'm yeah. sure that you knew that, but I didn't know that. Yeah, we, we knew it very well, and um, we actually do a, a great big conservation effort every uh, every International Tiger Day. So uh, we sent some major funding yesterday to Corbett National Park in India. Uh, which we work with very closely to help conserve the wild tiger population there. When I was looking at the website for International Tiger Day, it's just depressing is what it is. I mean, it was just showing the numbers and just the the, all, the only numbers you need to see. 1913, essentially 100 years ago, the number of tigers in the wild was 100,000. 19, I'm sorry, 2014, 2015, the numbers of tigers in the wild, 3,000. Yeah, hmm. less than 3,000. 3,000. Uh, so it went from 100,000 to 3,000. Now, why is that? In 100 years. Um, mainly because of hunting, because of poaching, um, because of human population just taking over their territories. You know, 250 years ago, there was a half a million. So, I mean, literally, we have gone through <sighs> more than a 99% reduction in hmm. the species. So it's just... Now, what? why do people kill tigers? Um, just tigers, for the trophy? It, it has been, yes, certainly it's it's been the sport of kings to go out um, hunting tigers in the wild, uh, but also for the, the very real purpose of staying alive, keeping your family alive. Um, there was um, actually Jim Corbett, the guy that was uh, the founder of India's first national park helping mm-hmm. to save all these tigers, was really known as a great tiger hunter. Um, and that's how he spent a, a lot of his earlier days. And uh, w- the first lion he killed, that or first tiger he killed, that one tiger is documented in 436 humans that that one tiger killed. Oh, wow. wow. So, um, so he was know, like a hero, in effect. He, he was a hero, yeah. absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. In his later days, he realized that obviously not all tigers are this way mm-hmm. um, and re- understood the importance of helping to conserve their habitat and and, and that's what um you know uh when the, when there's a story like this that just blows out of control and and this this dr walter uh palmer is now the most hated man in the world i would not <laughs> on, want to be him today. No. yeah no um do you feel that some a lot of information is lost like fact is lost in this when it comes to conservation efforts do you think it takes a life of its own and people misunderstand? I, I think that, that absolutely. I think people are immediately ready to jump on the bandwagon and condemn someone. Um, you know, I, I followed the story very closely, and there are a whole lot of questions um, that are out there that, that may not be being answered. You know, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, the, that the lion was baited and mm-hmm. he came over. But... I'm not sure exactly. You know, it's a common practice in Zimbabwe. It's one of the very few places that is still legal to hunt lions. Um, but it's it's very difficult to try and bait a single animal, get it to come from, you know, 15 miles away <laughs> right. onto your property. Well, they said uh, they dragged a dead animal on the back of their truck to try and attract this lion. Now, this lion had a collar with a GPS on it. Right. Um, so it was obviously it belonged to this preserve and they were tracking it and all that. So is it possible that they baited and lured the wrong lion by mistake? From what I've read, this place had a quota. It didn't have a quota for shooting lions. Mm. It had a quota for shooting leopards mm. and that they were trying to bait a leopard onto the property to be able to shoot it. This lion got a whiff of it and came in, and 
um, they, they they shot the lion. Obviously, there wasn't a, a quota for it, but um, you know, unfortunately, you you have that very dishonest practice of them shooting at one place and claiming it was shot somewhere mm-hmm. else. Right. He's been uh, convicted of that uh, before. That exact yeah. same thing with the bear. Right. Um, but I also believe that in Africa, a lot of times you have to hire a professional guide. Right. And you are going by what your guide tells you to do. Well, um, in this instance, I mean, the $50,000 that he paid went to private guides that were sure. doing that. I mean, he just paid individuals to help him do this. In the other instances that we've heard about, like where the guy went to, you know, paid $350,000 to shoot a rhino. In that, Namibia, yeah. Yeah, you know, we know that the rhino was, you know, a non-producing member of the herd and was just kind of taking up space, if you want to put it that way. Yep. That money actually goes to good because it actually goes to conver- uh, conservation uh, processes. But this one, th- this doesn't. It, a small portion of it does, obviously not a whole lot, but there there are permits that absolutely have to be bought through the government um, to do this. Um, and Cecil the lion is unfortunately the exact opposite of what that rhino was. You know, the mm-hmm. rhino was actually keeping other males away. They mm-hmm. couldn't populate. Um, and, and the real big problem with, uh, with hunting lions is that they always want to, of course, go kill the giant male right. lion because that's the big trophy. But unfortunately, um, that lion is the head of a pride of lions. And when he is gone, the next male lion comes in and moves in, and the first thing that that lion has to do to establish his territory is kill all that previous male's cubs right. so the females come back into estrus and start reproducing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, the killing of one lion could equal the killing of 25 lions, ultimately, as there's a struggle for the pride. Robert, why do you think there's such world outrage over this line i mean we're talking you know dave and i are talking about other major issues we're talking about the planned parenthood videos we're talking about you know another man that was shot dead by a cop and right you know, in someone's, Cincinnati, yeah. yeah we're talking about major issues that involve human beings why is it that this story has got so much attention worldwide it is something that, um, that that people are definitely empathizing with, but it is something that has become very culturally prominent right now. Um, you know, and and this is a fairly uh, recent thing. Um, Forty, fifty years ago, big game hunting was you know something that was sought after. Mm-hmm. You know, some of our biggest heroes, Ernest Hemingway, yep. you know, was a was a giant hunter. Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, great big hunter, but it is something that has become culturally, politically incorrect to do. Um, so people are just ready to jump on that bandwagon. Um, it's almost like, uh, everything that you were trying, not you, but you, people like you were trying to do is to get people to recognize the killing of animals in a sense that, that it, you know, in the wrong way that it's being done as opposed to the right or appropriate way. It's almost like it's backfired. Because it's it's given, you know, Dave was talking about the person paying three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the name of conservation. That was even being uh, looked attacked, at, yeah, yeah being uh, attacked by people. Uh, so, so how how now do you try and balance that in the public? It, it, it seems it is very difficult because, of course, people become very emotional about so like something like this. That's, you know, that's that's the whole thing. Um, but we do have to find a balanced position. You know, in a, in a lot of ways, um, people just look at wildlife as a resource. You know, shooting a lion is like shooting a bear, is like shooting a deer, is like shooting a rabbit. Um, but the big problem that we're facing is that the lions and the elephants and the rhinos and all of this sought after big game, we only have a, a few thousand of them left in the right. wild, which is what really needs to be uh, looked at and controlled. You know, lions are on the IUCN uh red list as threatened species, but it is still legally uh, allowed to be able to hunt them and import the trophies into the U.S. As Hmm. long as you have a CITES permit, you have all the correct paperwork, you can import that trophy. So what really needs to happen is that these animals need more protection. You know, they they need to be with, there's about 30,000 lions, um, which is, you know, seems like quite a few, but that, you know, over Mm -hmm. uh, a a large continent, that is just a handful of animals and um so protecting them has got to be 
the first step into helping save them. We only got about a little bit more than a minute left. How are things going over at Myrtle Beach Safari? It's been a long, hot summer. Things been uh, <laughs> it things has been, been cooking a over hot there. Summer. It's been a fantastic summer, actually. Um, you know, the people are always asking how the animals fare, but. You know, a tiger's from India where it's 110 in the shade. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're out there loving it. You know, it's, it's all of our guests, all of our tourists that are, that are melting <laughs> under the hot sun. Uh, animals are faring just great though. If you want to get more information, go to MyrtleBeachSafari.com. Um, yeah, we, we thought of you immediately when we saw this uh, story about uh, mm-hmm. Cecil the lion. And uh, it's just, it's, a, it's a shame. But like Liz says, it's just captured the imagination of everybody. Cause I think that you've gotten to the point where you see these magnificent animals and you're like, why? Why are people killing? Why, indeed. All right. Uh, again, go to MyrtleBeachSafari.com, the uh, Tigers Preserve. You can also go up to Barefoot Landing. You've got your uh, animals out there on a daily Tigers basis. Tigers Preservation Station. Uh, yeah. This time of year, we're open from 6 to 8 p.m., so they can visit the Tigers there. And your tours at Myrtle Beach Safari, when are those? Uh, um, those are by reservation only, and uh, they can find out about that by going to Preservation Station or, again, visiting MyrtleBeachSafari.com. All right. Rob thanks, Johnson, Robert. thanks so much for all you do, uh, obviously, and thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Liz. Thank all you. right. It's coming up on 7 o'clock. It is going to be hot again today. 90 on the beaches, 95 inland, but the, the Tigers love it. Uh, heat in- Woo! 7.06, Hot Talk 99.5, Thursday morning, 30th of July, the penultimate day. Uh, I want to thank Rob Johnson from Myrtle Beach Safari for joining us bright and early this morning. Usually he's on a little bit later with us when mm-hmm. he comes on, but he had yeah. some. He had like a morning tour this morning, and then I think he was going to be unavailable tomorrow and since... We wanted to talk about uh, the Cecil the Lion situation. Uh, now was the best you time know, to do it. You know what he said, and he said this before that um, uh, about conservation. That hunters actually contribute more to conservation they, they monetarily do. than all those people complaining about Mia Farrow, Ted Nugent, and everybody else. Yeah. Ted Nugent's actually on the side of the hunters, but uh, all those people combined. They do um, because they're preserving it, you know, for their sport. But like, you know. Someone was saying, you know, I heard someone talking about it and they were saying, wow, isn't it amazing that one person can look at it, an a magnificent animal like a lion, right? Mm-hmm. And, and just, just, you know, bask in its beauty, right? Mm-hmm. And yet another person can look at that and say, wow, I want to shoot it and kill it and put it on my wall. Yeah. It's like that, that different frame of mind <clears throat> that you may not agree with, um, you know, the other side, but in some cases, hunting is necessary. Well, it, it absolutely is. I mean, if you look at some of the smaller animals, deers and uh, rabbits especially, you've got to control the population because a lot of times they, it, it gets into a situation where natural predators aren't there. They get overpopulated. They start mm-hmm. getting sickly because there's not enough food yeah. for that many animals. So you've got to thin the herd. you well, just got to do that. But I remember you were talking about conservation. Yeah. I learned that. First, the first time I really learned that is when I was working at a country station here in town about 25 years ago. And mm-hmm. they said, hey, Dave, we've got a Ducks Unlimited uh, you know, um, a banquet coming up. Do you want to MC this for us? I'm like, yeah, sure. That would be great. So I went there, and they had you know, game. I really had never eaten you know, venison and some other stuff before, yeah. so we had that. But I also learned at that time that you know, the main thing that Ducks Unlimited does is preserve wetlands. And, mm. you know, and through what they do with the preservation, yes, it does bring ducks so that the ducks can then be shot. But at the same time, they're preserving all the wetlands and the environments and the ducks repopulate. You don't have to worry about the population of ducks and, and deer and rabbits like you do with lions and tigers and rhinos and stuff like that. Those mm-hmm. populations are going to be wiped out. Maybe some of them with, progress. within our lifetime. We might yeah. see the end of wild animals such as some of those big big creatures Well, we've learned by going to myrtle beach safari and i'm not sure if they discussed this when you were there um but on the tour you know they were saying that um certain colors of tigers are already extinct and so they're they are actually breeding in such a way to bring back those recessive traits yeah i did see that i I do remember them mentioning that That that's very interesting um so there are like type you know versions of certain animals that are already extinct or on the verge it's uh it's sad and like i said just looking at the uh the website for yesterday was international tiger day just coincidentally and uh a hundred years ago there were a hundred thousand tigers in the wild now there's three thousand or less yeah, than three thousand as rob said and you know as rob said a minute ago he says you know a couple hundred years ago there were a quarter million there are you know two hundred fifty thousand right. in the wild and now just because of habitats being crunched mm-hmm. and uh uh hunting etc it's gone down to where you can count 
how, exactly how many tigers there are. So it's just really sad. Yeah. Seven eleven on Hot Talk ninety nine five.